Okay, it is Tuesday, December 22nd, 2020. And today's demo is for all my classes, so science of cooking and regional cuisine. And it is the hot cocoa mix. It is a recipe from Alton Brown, who is one of my favorite uh, Food Network chefs um, and food scientists, right? So we're gonna be making a powdered mix that you can then use and turn into hot cocoa anytime. So I'm hoping it's a recipe you guys can use over your upcoming holiday break, right? And I'm gonna show you a couple of tricks to jazz it up a little bit. So you have a little bit more fun with it as well. So all you're really gonna need is a big mixing bowl and a whisk, right? This is all in a powdered form. All the ingredients going in are, you know, powdered, dry ingredients. So we're gonna be adding them in one at a time. To start off, I'm gonna start with powdered sugar, okay? So I've got my mixing bowl here and my whisk, and we're just gonna be using some confectioner sugar, right? Um, name brand, store brand is fine. Doesn't matter which, okay? Um, gonna be doing two cups. So I have one cup measure here, so I'm gonna do two of these. Now when you're measuring powdered sugar, you can use the bag to help level that off, or you can use a um, butter knife or things to make sure that you're getting a nice level measurement, right? So I'm gonna do two cups of the powdered sugar, okay? So this is what's gonna give us our sweetness. All right, so there's one and two. Now for the cocoa part of this, you have some choices, right? So I'm gonna be using a blend of two of them, okay? So two of the Hershey's Cocos. These are both unsweetened, because we already have our sugar here in the bowl, right? So these are unsweetened baking cocoa. So we have the regular Hershey's Cocoa and the special dark, okay? So this is gonna give a little bit more richness and a little bit more color to the cocoa, and you're gonna see when I put these in the bowl side by side, the color difference of the two, okay? So, this calls for one cup of cocoa powder, right? So I'm gonna do half a cup of the regular, half a cup of the special dark. I'm gonna use a quarter cup measure though, so I'm gonna need to do two of these to make my half a cup of each, just because it's smaller to get inside of these smaller, narrower containers, okay? Um, you're also gonna wanna have a butter knife handy to scrape them left, okay? Some kind of spatula or something, all right? So when you're doing these, Make sure that we're getting a nice level measurement. Cocoa powder is very dusty. It travels through the air very well. So be real careful and cautious as you're doing it. Okay. So we're gonna put a half a cup of each, right? So that's a quarter cup. Another quarter makes our half, right? And this is the regular unsweetened. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the special dark. Okay, and you're gonna notice this is much darker, deeper cocoa color. Okay. Especially when we put them side by side here. And that's gonna give us one full cup of cocoa powder. So two cups of powdered sugar, one cup of cocoa so far. Okay. So I want you to be able to see that side by side, right? So when you're looking at those colors, you can see that color variation, right? That's the special dark over here on this side, and that's the regular unsweetened cocoa powder on this side, okay? Now you can mix as you go, or you can wait and do the whole thing as one. It doesn't really matter, right? So our next ingredient is gonna be our two and a half cups of powdered milk, okay? So just you wanna look for something that says uh, dry milk on the package, okay? This is why you can make this cocoa with heated it, you know, heated up milk, you know, warm milk. You don't have to, you can just use water because we're adding in a powdered milk form, so that's gonna help give us our creaminess, right? And that extra flavor. So we need two full cups of the dried milk, plus a half a cup, okay? And you'll look at the dry milk, it kind of has a little bit of a granular texture to it, right? It's definitely a nice powder form. There's one. Make sure they're nice level cups. There's two full cups, and then we're gonna do our half a cup. All right. You can already see how much this bowl is filling up, so I have a good size mixing bowl, because it's gonna be a lot of ingredients going together, right? All right, so our next ingredient is just regular table salt, 
okay? The same kind you would put in your salt shaker, so this is a fine salt, right? You can use um, whatever you have on hand, okay? I'm only gonna use a teaspoon of salt. The reason we're doing this is that salt helps bring out the flavors of things that are sweet, sugars, but especially chocolate, right? It helps enhance the flavor of the chocolate. So we're gonna do one level teaspoon of salt, which isn't a lot for this whole batch, right? This batch makes about five and a half cups of mix. So you don't need a lot, right? Then we're gonna add in something that's gonna help thicken this slightly, you know, improve the texture of our cocoa, which is cornstarch. So we're just gonna use a regular cornstarch and we only need two teaspoons. What I do with this is because it's so light and clumpy, right? Is just use your finger the top so you get a nice level measure. Okay. So we're gonna do two of those, but make sure you get nice clean hands when you do that, right? Two teaspoons of cornstarch. Now, another ingredient, which is optional, um, so if anybody has any reason that they can't have it, is cayenne pepper, right? So this, you just add a good size pinch. You can add more if you like, but historically, um, I'm just going to add a small pinch into this. And the reason for that is that peppers traditionally go with chocolate. So the ancient Aztecs and the Mayans were known for putting spicy chili peppers in their hot chocolate um, drinkings, you know, mugs and things like that at the time. Right? So I'm going to blend this. So this is why we're using a whisk. This is all powder, right? So you want to mix slowly. You don't want to wear this. You don't want it flying all over your kitchen. But we want to make sure that this is well blended. So I'm just going to slowly mix. I'm spinning my bowl as I go here. I want to get all that powdered sugar on the bottom, and the cocoa and the milk all blended together. Right? It's a nice, easy, simple recipe, but it makes a lot. So you'll be able to have a lot of this on hand for vacation, for snow days. something to drink while watching a good movie, right? So I'm gonna be a little more aggressive now that it, most of it's blended together because I wanna work out any little lumps. Okay. Sometimes you'll get lumps in your powdered sugar, in your cocoa powder, just from them sitting in the containers and the bags. So by coming in and blending this really well, right, you'll get a nice, well-combined mixture, okay? The other trick to this is how I store it. So I'm going to be showing you how to make a cup of this in a second. But for storing it, I like a glass jar. These are just glass canning jars. This is a quart size. You can use a container uh, that has a nice tight-fitting lid or recycle a, you know, and clean out an old spaghetti sauce jar, things like that. Because this way here, I can put the mix in. It's great for giving as a gift but I can also shake it before I use it. So that way if I haven't used the cocoa mix in a week or two, right, I can take and just shake the jar before I add it into my mug. So now that it's all well combined, I've got my little funnel here, and I'm just gonna fill my jar. This way, I have cocoa on demand. Now this makes, like I said, about five and a half cups, so it's gonna be more than fills this one jar. So you can add into a second container, or you can use smaller jars, like I said, so you can keep a big one for you and give a small one as a gift, All right? And this is a nice little gift right now with everything that's going on. You know, give some, something a little bit homemade, so some sort of nice container, right? And then the lid goes on. But like I said, this way here, when you haven't used the cocoa for a while, all I can do now is just give a little shake, right, before I use it and then it's well blended, okay? You can put a nice little label of ribbon on it and you know tell people just add hot water on the instructions and that's it, right? Uh, and these jars come in all different various sizes and things as well, okay? So now for the cocoa, to add a little extra fun, right? Um, I wanted to have marshmallows. So you buy those ones in the store, the little pouches, you know, that have the mini marshmallows and you get like a speck of a marshmallow. To me, that's just unacceptable. I like bigger marshmallows. So what Chef did is I dehydrated my own. So I have a dehydrator in the kitchen here um, that I use for drying herbs and beef jerky and things like that. 
but for this case, it is dehydrated marshmallows, right? And what happens is they get really super hard, okay? So these were in the dehydrator for about six hours at 130 degrees. You want to make sure that when you think they're just about done, as you take a few out, set them to the side somewhere to cool, give them a few minutes, three to five minutes, and then try them because they're not going to feel and taste fully dry until they cool down, okay? As you can see, I can't squeeze this marshmallow even with all my strength, okay? These are crunchy, okay? Now, if you don't have a dehydrator at home, you can do these in the oven, okay? The best way to do that is a baking sheet with a cooling rack on top. Same thing, get your oven as low as you can. Try and check the temperature on it. So right around 130 degrees, put them in there. If your oven runs a little too hot, you can pop the door open just a little bit. You just want to have that dry air circulating around, and you can make your own mini marshmallows just like this, right? So if you like marshmallows in your cereal, it's the same thing, okay? So I'm going to take a few off the tray. And you'll be able to hear these, right? Sounds like you're pouring cereal, right? That's why. It's the same marshmallows that you have in your morning cereal. Okay, your lucky charms and all those things. Okay, um, but these are also great to package up. You can get little gift bags at the dollar store this time of year, and all kinds of different holiday designs, winter themes, and things like that. And then this is what I give with the jars of cocoa, so they can have their marshmallows too. You can put this in the mix, but I like to be able to add extra marshmallows, so that's why I like them on the side. Okay. Now for the cocoa part itself, you're gonna need a mug. And something to stir with. So I'm going to use a cinnamon stick. Okay. Just to make it a little bit more fun. But that's also going to add a lot of flavor to that too. So if you like spice in your drinks this time of year, use a cinnamon stick. Now, the recipe says you know to fill your mug halfway full. I find that's a little bit too strong for me. Um, but it'll vary depending on the size of your mug too. This is a fairly small six ounce mug. So if you have big giant ones, you're going to need more mix. Something smaller, you'll need less. But I'm just going to put a couple of good sized tablespoons in to the mug, right? And I just got some hot water. I heat it up in my tea kettle here, right? Nothing fancy. I'm going to add that in. You want to make sure you save a little space for your marshmallows. Right? And then you can use your cinnamon stick to stir. Uh, for another option as a stir, you can also use candy canes, right? And then they'll melt slowly and you'll get that nice chocolate peppermint flavor as you're drinking it. Another good spice to add into your cocoa is a little fresh nutmeg. So this is a whole nutmeg I wanted to show you guys this morning, right? So this is what it looks like on the outside and you can freshly grate this right into your mug. This is what the nutmeg looks like on the inside, okay? Because this is fresh, right? You're freshly grating it even though it's a dried nutmeg. This is gonna be much stronger than anything that you buy in those little containers in the store. So I'm gonna use my little microplane here. You could use a box grater. And just give it a couple little swipes. Tap off the extra, right? And that's it. But you only need a little bit because it is really strong. Okay, give this a good stir. And then you wanna take and finish this off with some of those dehydrated marshmallows. Like I said, in this way you can add as many as you like. And they will float and they will stay and sustain for a while a lot longer than the fresh marshmallows which tend to disappear instantly right so you'll have these for a little while longer but that's it for your cocoa right so lots of fun simple like i said put in a container or something that's you know got a nice tight fitting lid this will last in your cabinet for months and months right years um it probably won't last that long because you'll be drinking it but then you just give it a really good shake if you haven't used it in a while Make sure everything is really well blended together, your sugar, your cocoa, your powdered milk. Add it to your mug. Give it to a friend as gifts. Um, something that your grandparents would really appreciate, right? So that's it. Hot cocoa mix, dehydrated marshmallows. That's your demo for today.